Hello again, fellow Beach Bum Traders. Thank you for joining us for part two of our weekly trading game plan for the trading week of April 24th through April 28th. We're in part two. We'll select our top swing trading stocks to watch. We'll talk about what stocks we're putting on our real-time watch list for our top swing trading stocks to watch. Also in our bullpen and our shopping list, we'll look at opportunities in ETFs. We'll talk about our dividend payers, opportunities with dividend payers, and also with our various option strategies. So uh, stick around to the end of the video. And again, we've got some additions for some uh, interesting dividend payers that we want to look at. And so again, uh, we've got a lot to cover, so we'll get started. Welcome to Ricky Khan. Thank you for joining us. Glad to see you again. So here's our notes for part two of our weekly trading game plan for this week of April 24th through April 28th. This is a Google document that's publicly accessible. You can find the link to this Google document in the description box below. We put all of our notes, our Google documents with our notes for our weekly trading game plans in a publicly accessible Google Drive folder. So you can refer back to these uh, and previous notes from our weekly trading game plans uh, via the link to that Google Drive folder in the description box below. And again, our notes documents contain bonus links to bonus videos, all the tools, et cetera, uh, that we use to select our top swing trading stocks, our trade ideas, et cetera. Welcome, MD. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us as well. If you haven't already seen part one of our weekly trading game plan for this week titled will april showers bring may flowers in the stock market we would highly recommend that you also view part one as that contains all of our market analysis for the upcoming trading week uh, additional strategies trade ideas and again more bonus videos uh, as that goes into the input to the selection of our stocks uh, for our top swing trading uh, watch list for this week so we'll start off with the trades that we made this week. Not a whole lot of activity uh, as we've been talking. We talked again in part one. Markets have been pretty range bound, pretty uh, consolidated, flat, etc. Not very conducive to our uh, longer term swing trading strategy. But again, we'll point out uh, lots of opportunities for shorter term scalp trading, day trading, etc. as well. Uh, but in terms of our trades for this week, they are focused on R R U R O Y, which is one of the uranium stocks that we've been watching and trading over the past several weeks. And we were coming into this week. We went long on U R O Y on the 6th of April at 197. We got stopped out on the 18th at 204 for a small profit. Uh, about 3.6%, a little less than 4%, which equates to a monthly ROI of about 9%. Uh, so again, congratulations to all of our fe fellow Beach Bum traders who profited from that uh, scalp on UROI. And then you'll see uh, we jumped it back in on the 20th at 196 for another scalp swing trade. So we're again long UROI. Uh, it has since broken down, as we'll see in the uh, Weeble chart for UROI. So there's still an opportunity for you to actually get in cheaper. Um, and just a reminder, if you would like to get real-time trade alerts uh, when we make a trade, when we uh, exit a trade, etc., cetera, uh, you can join any level of our Patreon. And you can find the link also in the description box below to our Patreon. And when we enter or exit a, a trade, I try to post that to our Patreon members as soon as possible. You'll get an email notification. And again, I tend to not post that out to social media until it's actually uh, gone higher. So it gives you the opportunity to get in at even a potentially better price than, than we got in. So uh, that's just, again, a benefit from our Patreons. Also, uh, those notifications get posted to an alerts channel in our Discord that our Patreon members have access to. We have several alerts channels. Um, you can see when I posted our, our re-entry re -entry into UROI in the trade alerts channel. So again, our Patreon members also have access to these channels. We also have a Thinkorswim price alert channel that our patreon members have access to uh, these are automatically generated based on price alerts that i sent thick or swim uh, we'll talk about mp mp materials 
uh, later in this video, but you can see it broke down below its 52 week low and that trade alert got generated in the thinkorswim. So again, if, if you'd like to get uh, those types of alerts and based on our trading, our price targets, et cetera, uh, you can join any level of our Patreon and get that information. Again, we don't uh, recommend that you follow us or anyone else blindly into trades, but again, if this would help you see opportunities, see why, when, and why we're entering when and why we're exiting trades, uh, you can get that information. So we hope that all helps. So we'll quickly look at those URI trades. Uh, welcome, Ali in the Bay, Easy Mike. Thank you for joining us. Glad to see you as well. Hope you all are doing well today. So here's URLY, and again, we we uh, previously were in on the 6th, so you can see that support level around 196, 197. Uh, we got in there on the 6th, rode that up. Uh, when it rolled over and broke down below that pivot point, we got stopped out, took our profits. You can see it's declined since then. We got back in on the 20th at about 196 or so. Um, I might have got a little FOMO'd into that trade, but I was watching the level twos and it looked like there was a big block trade at 195. I thought it would uh, hold that 195. It did not. Um, I'm fine with that. Uh, again, the risk reward profile is, is still very attractive at this level. And then they were, you know, they rotated out of uranium, pushed uranium down. Um, on Friday. So again, there's an opportunity here for you to get in a much uh, at a much cheaper price. Um, again, you know, make sure that it's stable. It's got good support. Again, I would look at the level twos, make sure, you know, you've got enough buyers to support pushing the price up. And again, you have the opportunity to get in at a better price at, uh, than we did. But again, the risk reward profile is pretty nice. You know, it's got upside into the the high twos, um, almost $3. So again, uh, happy with swinging that for the longer term. When they rotate back into uranium, uh, we see good profit potential in uh, UROI. Just watching the chat, you guys are talking about banks, insurance, mortgage insurance, mortgage-backed securities. Yep, yeah, we talked about a lot of that yesterday. We'll talk about that in terms of the shopping list uh, later on as well. So now let's look at what we've got on our watch list for this week. Again, this is our real-time watch list. We're watching these in real time have automated systems that uh, notify me when they reach our price targets, um, if they're moving up, moving down, etc. So I'll quickly go through these and then we'll look at the charts in Weeble as well. So another uranium stock that we've been watching for a while is DNN. Uh, it's been pretty stable at around a dollar. Uh, they did have some somewhat positive move or positive news. It didn't really move the stock. And again, it's been pretty stable at a dollar. Uh, we'll look at the chart in a minute. But again, that's another uranium play uh, that we like. IPP we've been watching for a little while. This is a uh, play on potash. It has been declining. Uh, we might get an opportunity to get into that for that rotation into agricultural inputs and back into potash. Um, you can hear our short video on discussion of potash stocks, why we like IPP or IPI uh, via the bonus link uh, to that video here in our uh, notes. METC is our uh, play on the sector rotation in into coal, in and out of coal. So Again, we've been talking about these sector rotations. They've been rotating in and out of sectors. One of the ones they flip is coal. So again, we'd get in when they rotate out of coal, get uh, get uh, into METC, and then uh, ride that sector rotation up, get out when they rotate back out. And again, you can see it pays a small uh, dividend as well. OPP is one that we've uh, repeatedly traded. Um, 
pays a pretty nice monthly dividend. This is a fixed income bond fund. You can see it last went next dividend on the 13th. Last week, we talked about why I've waited to get into that. I'm going to snip out that discussion into a separate video to discuss uh, when to buy and not to buy OPP. Um, it looks like we might get another opportunity before the next X dividend date, and I would buy a big chunk of OPP to collect that monthly dividend. Uh, yesterday we talked about SOX. SOX is the short on semiconductors. We saw that, you know, really it's it's already pretty SOX has gone up, SOX L has gone down. Uh, we'll see if we happen to get one more push in SOX L up to this resistance point. Um, otherwise, um, we'll let SOX S go and we'll probably take it off the watch list. I know a number of our fellow beach bum traders are making nice profits on SOX S. Um, and, and congratulations to them. And then we talked about URLY. Uh, we added it back when we got stopped out. We, we took it off when we went long again, and we just looked at the chart. There's still a good opportunity uh, if you want to get into URLY. Um, just another quick reminder that uh, if, if uh, Number one, our Patreons have access to a daily automatically updated and generated web page that has price targets, uh, the dividend amounts, ex-dividend dates, optionality, dividend yields, etc. And if we make any intra-week uh, updates to our watch list, those get automatically posted on that web page. And again, our Patreons have access to that, as well as we have a stocks watch list channel in our Discord that our Patreon members have access to. And uh, if I make any more frequent updates, including to our puts ROIC Google Sheet, which we'll talk about in a little while. Um, I post those out in the Stocks Watch List channel in our Discord. So again, our, our Patreons get uh, updated as to any changes we make to any of our watch lists uh, during the week. So if you're interested in more frequent updates to our watch list, etc., uh, you can join any level of our Patreon and, and get access to that information. So now I'll jump over to Weeble and we'll look at the stocks in our watch list. Welcome Clifford Mantley. Thank you for joining us. Glad to see you here as well. Um, quick reminder on Weeble is right now they have a special offer that they're rolling out their cat wealth Weeble cash management and they're offering a 5.8% annual um, yield. 4.1% uh, basic, and if you're a new user, you get an extra 1.7% uh, for just idle cash sitting in your your brokerage account, which is a pretty pretty good deal. Uh, it's beating you know most of the bank savings accounts, uh, treasury bills, etc. So if you're not already using Weeble, number one, you can get up to 12 free stocks worth three to three thousand dollars each for opening and funding your account with any amount, and then again, you can earn. Uh, money on any idle cash you have sitting in your account at 5.8%. So again, better than savings accounts, better than treasury bonds, etc. And it's more liquid. Um, and it has a higher level of insurance that so we've talked about that uh, the level of insurance in a brokerage account, I believe is um, 250,000. And I believe Weeble has some extra insurance. And we covered that a couple weeks ago uh, with the, the issues with the banks. So it's actually safer and you're earning more money by having your money in a Weeble brokerage account uh, than you would have it sitting in the bank. So I hope that helps. And I'll put the link. You can find our affiliate link to Weeble in the description box below. And I'll also quickly throw it up in the banner. I'm using the online browser version of Weeble. Again, another nice thing about Weeble is you can have all kinds of different watch lists. You can see we have thematic watch lists. We've got our main watch list. Um, we have our bullpen, etc. So it's, it's really easy to maintain and flip between various watch lists in Weeble. MD says he loves Weeble too. Yeah, we, we do too. Another thing we really love is the 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. trading hours. As again, sometimes there's opportunities, uh, you know, at 4 a.m. that I like to take advantage of. Although the activity uh, nowadays in the pre-market is much less than it, it was uh, for the past couple of years. 
So here's DNN. Again, ideally, I'd like it, you know, down around 91. I've got an order sitting there waiting at 92. Uh, it just hasn't hit. You can see occasionally they, they spike it down. You see it's pretty stable at one. Again, they had some recent positive news about one of their uh, mining operations, one of their uranium operations, but it really didn't uh, move much. And again, we saw a, a sector rotation out of uranium recently. Again, DNN held up pretty pretty. Uh, steadily we'll see if we happen to get a dip to get in uh, any price under one on dnn is pretty good and then up to 140s you know 150s is so it's got a very nice uh, risk reward profile even at a uh, dollar at here's ip ipi this is our potash play you see it was declining headed towards our price target and you can see uh, after hours yesterday they spiked it up pretty significantly but it you know it's hitting that support level we might get a bounce down uh, we'll see if we get an opportunity to get in there at a stable bottom metc is our coal play again it was declining sector rotation out of coal you know, I, I like it at 802, but, you know, around 8 looks pretty good, too. Risk reward's pretty good, you know, at least up to 10. Could go as high as, you know, 17 or so. OPP, this is that fixed income bond fund. You can see it pays about 10 cents. Last exhibit on that April 13th. Uh, you see it's it's been declining uh, anything, uh, you know, at about uh, $8 would be good. Um, but if it does uh, bottom and, and turn back up, um, I will probably buy a big chunk of OPP for the next uh, dividend. Talked about SOXL and SOXS uh, yesterday as well. So I was, you know, hoping we might get one more push up in semiconductors to hit that heavy resistance line. You can see it tends to reject off that 1840 resistance line, which gives you my, the trigger for an entry point into SOX S. So you see SOX S has run up uh, significantly. So uh, we'll, we'll see if it stays just in this range or SOX L continues to decline, then obviously we'll, we'll let SOX S go. So. And again, yesterday we looked at where these are relative to the, their longer term trends, and it looks like the push in semiconductors may be over. Let me grab a drink a second and check, catch up with the chat, and then we'll continue to our bullpen stocks. We'll talk about MP. And yes, Easy Mike, I remember the IBM selector typewriter. I think we had one of those at, at one point. Welcome trading part-time. Glad to see you. Thank you for joining us. So if you happen to be new to our channel, the concept of our bullpen stocks are ones that we're not watching real time, but they might present a favorable setup in the near near future. So I just revisit these at the end of the day, see if their technical setup has improved. If so, we put them in the game, we move them up to our real time watch list. If they run away or break down, we just take them out of the bullpen uh, and they'll pop up in a scan again in the future. Uh, MP popped up when it broke that 52-week low. You saw I got that uh, price alert from Thinkorswim that we had set at the 52-week low. And so I looked at MP and to see what was going on. Apparently, they got a number of price target downgrades. Um, we still like MP. 
Uh, you can see in this uh, video, you can access our due diligence, previous due diligence video on MP materials via the link in the notes here or also on our Beach Bum Trading YouTube channel. Why we like MP, it's a whole rare earth concept play. Um, they also have government contracts. So again, we, we like it. Uh, we'll see in the charts that it's, you know, it had a pretty major breakdown. Uh, so we'd like to see it establish a bottom somewhere, and then we would uh, look at going long MP materials. Again, this is a U.S.-based rare earth uh, materials um, miner, and uh, we've heard about uh, securing our supply chain, securing rare earth materials. Most of these come out of China. So again, you can hear more about why I like MP and this due diligence, uh, but uh, we wouldn't mind getting uh, long MP materials at a good price. PDI we talked about last week. Um, this is another uh, kind of fixed income fund. Pays a nice dividend, 14.8%. It's a monthly dividend. Just went X dividend on the 12th of April. This one's not optionable, so you couldn't sell covered calls against it. Um, it's a closed end fund based on debt. Um, but it has a mixture of debt. Again, we talked in more detail. We investigated PDI last week, and I'll try to release that quick take uh, due diligence on PDI uh, as a separate video as soon as I can. Another uranium stock we've been watching for a while is UUUU. It's still hovering above the price target I'd like, uh, but it's one that we've got on the radar for a, a potential uranium play. So let's look at those bullpen stocks in Weeble. So we'll see an MP, see this you know dramatic decline in MP materials, broke down below its 52 week low. You know, it's we're just waiting to find a, a good stable bottom. If we zoom out, you know, again, it broke through its 52 week low, very steep descent. We're just waiting for it to find a bottom. And then again, we would probably go log MP materials. Again, got decent, you know, upside up into the, you know, 37 or so in the near near term. That previous uh, 52 week low around 223.44 was uh, a pretty stable support level. So the fact it's broken down through that, that's probably going to provide a little level of resistance. Uh, so you might want to wait for it to break through that uh, resistance level to go long. So. Here's PDI. Again, that's this uh, debt bond fund. You can see it really popped up uh, just on Friday. Again, with the PMI data came out, we saw the markets decline. Uh, weakness in the markets, yield pushed up. So that guy really popped up. I, I missed that turn. Uh, so we'll see if we get a little bit of a pullback. So it does look like the 1723 or so is a pretty good bottom. For PDI, again, it pays a nice monthly dividend. It's got decent upside, up to 20 or so. So, um, again, we'll, we'll be keeping an eye and see if we get a retracement. And, again, we'd be buying that for, for the mainly for the dividend plus some level of price appreciation. And, again, UUUU, uranium play. Again, it's kind of hovering in the middle. I kind of like it, you know, around this 470, 469 level is just kind of oscillating right now. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe on a rotation out of uranium, we might be able to pick up UUUU and DNN. Obviously, that would push UROI down some. But again, we'll, we'll, we'll hold it for those rotations in and out of uranium. Welcome, Walter Lyons. Glad to see you as well. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, we'll look at, um, we'll, we'll talk about the uh, Albemarle and the Chilean uh, lithium, government control of lithium mines, etc. Uh, a little bit later, but uh, we can look at the Chile ECH uh, ETF when we get to our ETF spreadsheet as well. And we talked about that yesterday in terms of uh, basic materials, uh, the effect that that had on, on basic materials in general. 
So again, just a quick reminder, none of our videos should be considered financial advice. We're not financial advisors. Um, all of our content is for entertainment and education purposes only. I don't think uh, I don't think I have that one. That's interesting. EWA. We'll have to look at that. Let me add that to our questions. And uh, I don't have an Australian ETF, so that's uh, interesting. Thank you for sharing that, Easy Mike. Again. Okay, so we talked about the bullpens. We're going to look at our ETFs. So we'll bring up our ETF spreadsheet. Uh, we've been talking about um, and welcome, born to be free. Good to see you. I, I hope you're okay. I, I wondered uh, if anything happened to you. So yeah, just let me know uh, when you want to meet up again. I. I'm glad to hear you're okay. I, again, I wondered what happened. Thank you for joining us as well. So we've been talking about the financial sector with the bank collapse. So we talked about uh, financial sector ETFs. We talked about gold and silver ETFs. We talked about real estate ETFs. So again, uh, we parsed all those previous discussions out as separate videos. And you can access those via the bonus links uh, in the notes here. And we'll, we'll be releasing those as well. I think I released the gold and silver one uh, recently. you also see we added uh, JNK, which is junk. And I'm going to jump down to the questions and talk about junk in just a minute. Um, I want to open up our ETF spreadsheet. And just a quick reminder is that our All Access and VIP Patreons uh, have 24 by 7 access to this uh, ETF spreadsheet. You'll see it gets the prices get updated via Google Finance functions, and then we update the support and resistance, et cetera, uh, via automated systems at the end of each day. Uh, and it's a good way to identify opportunities within a sector, an index, et cetera. You can see the risk reward profiles. So if you would like access, uh, 24 by 7 access to our ETF spreadsheet, as well as you'll see our dividend payer spreadsheet, our puts ROIC spreadsheet. Again, our all access and VIP Patreons have access to um, all of these Google Sheets 24 by 7. And again, they're updated uh, near real time by the Google Finance functions and then also at the end of each day via our automated systems. So I want to talk about junk. Is uh, Shippa, Flippa the Shippa? I don't, I didn't see Flippa today. Uh, hopefully he's here or we'll see this later. He commented about junk, uh, J and K, in the live chat during last week's live stream. So I did the research on junk um, and we've added this to both the ETF. A spreadsheet as a play on bonds and also to our uh, dividend payers um, Google sheet and we'll look at each of them in uh, both the, uh, in terms of an ETF to play for Treasury bonds and also as a potential dividend payer um, also I'm gonna flip over to see so we can you know we can look at the chart on on junk we can see what it looks like real quickly you know you can see it's kind of oscillating within this uh, narrowing wedge. You can see it pays, you know, 6.2%. Uh, again, when we get to our dividend payers, we'll see how the total adjusted yields uh, comes out. You know, it's got pretty pretty heavy resistance in this 94 area. It's got some support, you know, down here in the 87s. So not not a terrible amount of range, but again, we'll we'll see the the adjusted yield when we get to the um, dividend payers uh, Google sheet you can see it's uh, price and yield performance high yield very liquid index invests uh, all but 80% in securities that are uh, 
determines economic characteristics are identical to. Okay, so a lot of uh, gibberish. <laughs> uh, so it's based on this Bloomberg uh, high yield, very liquid index. So that's what it's tracking and paying dividends on that. I, you know, interpret that to be you know, high yield bonds. Essentially, that's why they call it junk, junk bonds. So I want to show, we, I'd actually done research on these uh, bond ETFs a while back. So I have it in the ETF database sheet of our ETF spreadsheet. So again, I wanted to flip over to that. And what you could do is in any category here, let me zoom that in a little bit. So an asset class, if you look at look sort for bonds, you can see I have the analysis for you know a wide variety of bond funds. We can see the the risk reward uh, ratios for most of these. Uh, they're not reporting right now because of the Google Finance functions, um, but you can see the support and resistance levels. And when the Google Finance functions uh, fill in. You could see the uh, risk reward ratio for these um, various bond funds. And what you'll see is that they're really, they don't meet my uh, two to one risk reward profile in general. Um, so the ones that pay dividends might be attractive. But again, in general, for an ETF or a swing type straight trade, uh, they're, not, they're not terribly attractive. So again, I'll, I'll let you explore that further as, as you would like. But again, I've, I've done analysis on a, a wide range of the bond funds and the ones that do meet our two to one risk reward profile. Then we put in the main uh, ETF spreadsheet and you'll find those under treasury. So now under treasuries, actually, I think that one's under bonds. So we've got treasuries. Let me see where I put it. I thought I put it under uh, treasuries. Looks like I lost that ad, so I'll need to add that back in. So again, we could see, you know, the risk reward on junk. Is only about you know one point three eight support at eighty seven seventy nine resistance at ninety eight. So again, not not a very high risk reward profile in the near term. So again, the the might just be more interesting as a um, dividend payer. Okay, so if you have any other categories of ETFs that you'd like me to focus on, um, I can uh, look at those in our ETF spreadsheet. Otherwise, we can just flip quickly flip through them. I, I flipped through them quickly, and I didn't see anything else terribly attractive. We talked about uh, BITO. We've talked about yin and yang as day trade, short-term trades on China. We talked yesterday about uh, boil and cold um, as ways to trade um, natural gas. And we wanted to look at uh, the comparison of UNG versus boil so we've got ung here we've got boil there so in terms of risk reward ung is actually showing better right now from a support to resistance level it's not quite you can see you know bottom to top it's much more attractive uh, boil is much more attractive Looks like uh, UNG, the Google Finance function, isn't filled in yet. You can access the components of any of these ETFs via the links in the notes. So if you want to see what they're comprised on, get you know, information about fees, etc., uh, you can uh, do that via the links in, in the notes section.
talked about drip and gush. You can also look at uh, UCO and SCO, so very similar to uh, using UNG for natural gas. You can use UCO versus gush. Again, very similar. Gush is the leveraged ETF, so you know it has the decay over time that um, all the leveraged ETFs uh, suffer from, but also it gives you the the higher degree of risk reward as it's a 2x versus this would be just a 1x. Well, it looks like UCO is a 2x, so it's also leveraged. So that's. Talked about the big run up in uh, platinum. Saw that yesterday. Talked about real estate. Talked about semiconductors, Soxel and Sox S. So you see they're both kind of just in the middle of their range right now. Talked about, you know, silver's got some further upside to go, possibly up to 30. So again, here's the treasury, <clears throat> treasury ETFs that we have. Um, in a minute, I'm going to look at a, a new dividend payer that I like, which has to do with TLT. Um, and it may be more uh, preferable to TMF. We're currently long TMF, but uh, the one I'm going to show you in a few minutes, I might like even better than uh, TLT or TMF. So we're still long UVXY. We saw this serious decline in the VIX. You know, we'll, we'll just wait for a pop. It's going to take some kind of uh, external catalyst to give us a pop in the VIX might be the the Fed meeting and uh, if the market's offsides on the Fed raising interest rates, we might get that pop in the VIX. Otherwise, it's sitting below 17 right now. So MD is talking about foreclosures. So yeah, we'll, we'll talk about you know, warnings in terms of the... Um, the uh, bank collapse, the uh, housing market, the commercial real estate market, etc. Okay, so if anybody has any other categories you want to look at, just let me know. Otherwise, we'll continue. Okay, let me grab a drink a second, and again, we'll talk about our shopping list stocks. Our shopping list is, you know, stocks you always wanted to buy when they became a good value. Maybe it's a decline in the markets. Maybe it's an irrational reaction to earnings, uh, but you've got your list ready of what you want to buy given a, a good value opportunity. And we've just got some caveats I want to quickly cover uh, for, you know, making sure that your shopping list is, quote, safe, you know, from... Uh, various uh, negative factors. So just a second. So we've been talking about the fallout from the bank collapse for several weeks. We've released several videos with our previous discussions um, on that. Also, uh, the discussion I mentioned about the increased insurance on your brokerage account and how it's, it's actually probably safer in a brokerage account than in a bank account. Uh, if you do want to play the financial sector, the ETFs that you can use to trade that, uh, we've talked about that. And again, um, MD was bringing up, you know, mortgage back to securities, essentially, you know, foreclosures. Uh, also, you know, we've talked about the commercial real estate, maybe the next factor. Um, also, I recently heard that a lot of the commercial real estate leases are held by um, life insurance companies. And I thought that that was very strange. Um, but that was the statement that uh, life insurance companies are holding the leases on uh, 
quite a few of these um, commercial real estate buildings uh, that may, you know, they may default and turn in the keys and therefore they would, uh, those investments could have a dramatic decrease. So again, just something to watch out for. Uh, we've got several of these banks reporting earnings, the regional banks reporting earnings this week. And you want to make sure that uh, you're not getting trapped in the direct or indirect fallout from any further consequences from these bank collapses. So um, just a forewarning in those regards, and, and we'll see what happens. Um, also, uh, we've talked about zombie companies and zombie ETFs, how rising interest rates, they've, uh, they've barely able to pay their debt now, they're going to run into problems. We've talked about the credit crunch, they're not going to be able to get further uh, credit so watch out for offerings from these types of companies watch out for bankruptcies we heard bbby bed bath and beyonds going bankrupt uh we would expect more of these zombie companies to go bankrupt so you don't want to get stuck in one of those uh my you know recommendation again not financial advice but uh for a long time we've been avoiding unprofitable companies so um, again, I uh, snipped out our previous discussions about avoiding unprofitable companies, and you can hear that discussion in this bonus video uh, via the link in our notes. So again, we've, we've been filtering out unprofitable companies, not, not touching any unprofitable companies for quite some time. Uh, again, we've been talking for a long time about recession-proofing your portfolio. There's, you know, uh, further increased discussions about, you know, when are we going to have a recession? How deep is it going to be? Um, it's just my humble opinion, better safe than sorry, and make sure the stocks in your shopping list are going to be recession proof. So now let's look at our dividend payers. And uh, I've got some interesting ones that I want to add bring up our dividend payer spreadsheet while I talk about these additions. So I'm adding the following two uh, to our dividend payer spreadsheet. Uh, the first is CLM, it's Cornerstone Strategic Value Fund. And I'll go ahead and I'll bring up their chart uh, in Finviz. We can take a quick look at that. Looks like my browser is having issues right now. Might have killed it. So while I wait for that, okay, there he goes. Let me see if I can get TL. The other, the second one is TLTW, and this is the one uh, based on TLT. It's uh, iShares 20 plus year Treasury bond buy right strategy. And I find this one very interesting. So we'll talk about this uh, in more detail in a second. And I want to thank uh, the ETF Guide uh, YouTube channel for turning us on to both CLM and TLTW. Again, uh, we'll see the uh, definition of TLTW and also uh, the dividend and the potential risk reward uh, opportunity in, in that. Just a quick reminder, if you would like us to do research on any other dividend payers, uh, you can just let us know, you know, the comments to this video uh, in our free Discord. I'll throw the link up to our Discord in the description or in the banner. Again, our Discord is free to join. You'll find the invite in the description box below. Again, you can let us know of any you want to add. First, I'll look at the CLM just real quickly. Again, it's Cornerstone Strategic Value Fund. You can see it's got a double bottom here, you know, in the 725 area. It's got a resistance up, you know, 8, 876 or so, 8, 887 or so. Not a lot of range, uh, but it might be attractive at that double bottom level. You see it pays a dividend percentage of 19.3%. So it is not optionable. Um, it's an asset management. If we look at what it is, closed end fund, invest in public uh, equity markets, global. So it's got a global reach, diversified 
sectors, value and growth stocks. So again, pretty, pretty broad, diverse uh, holdings, pretty high dividend yield. It pays monthly. TLTW, again, I find this one very interesting. It's a, they're executing a buy right uh, strategy. So they're uh, writing and buying back uh, covered calls on the TLT, essentially. So uh, I find that very attractive. You can see the dividend yields, 22.9%. Uh, so very high dividend yield. It is not optionable. So again, they're they're doing a buy right, a covered call strategy on the TLT. So again, you can do this yourself on using TLT or TMF. We we sell and buy back covered calls on our position in uh, TMF, but you know it might be more attractive to just let them uh, execute that strategy. You'll see it doesn't have a very long history. It's a relatively new. Um, ETF, you can see it recently doesn't have a whole lot of range, you know, 32 to 35 or so. So, the you know, the price appreciation isn't uh, a whole lot. You see it does cycle pretty nicely. So there might be some, you know, scalping opportunities to get in uh, before an ex-dividend, then sell and then get back in, etc. cetera. Um, I want to look at these cycle dates in more detail to see if that is an opportunity of just scalping, buying in, taking the, the uh, dividend and then uh, selling and then buying back before the next ex-dividend date and see if that strategy would uh, give even further returns in terms of price appreciation. So again, we've added both of these um, to our, e, our dividend payers spreadsheet, so they'll get into our database, so they'll get updated in the future automatically. Uh, you can also then get uh, more details on each of them. So if we look at CLM, if you want to get more details on the uh, that, uh, you can get access to the uh, profile in Finviz via this link in the notes as well. So we see it's got an adjusted yield, which takes into account price appreciation as well as the dividend of you know sixty-seven percent. So pretty pretty nice. Again, price appreciation isn't really the two to one, but you know it's almost one point eight or so. Uh, it does pay monthly. Again, it's not optionable. And if we look at TLTW, so again, pays monthly. Again, not a whole lot of price appreciation, pretty narrow range, but again, it's got a very high uh, dividend yield percentage. So again, we hope that all helps. Those uh, will, in the future, get automatically updated uh, by our various automated systems. So as they announce uh, future ex-dividend dates, whatever their dividend date, uh, declared dividend is, payable date, etc., that will all get automatically updated in the spreadsheet uh, in the future. So if anybody else has another dividend payer you want to look at, we talked about junk. Uh, we'll look at junk a second. So we've also got J and K, junk. So you can see that's been added as well. You see risk rewards pretty low. Uh, adjusted yields halfway decent. It's got a yield of about 6%, adjusted at about 13%. Again, not a whole lot of price appreciation. So again, if, if you like that, it does pay a 45 cent monthly dividend. Uh, so if you like at least something that's beating, you know, the treasury rates and the savings rates, uh, junk's not bad. Uh, but again, not a whole lot of price appreciation opportunity. So again, if anybody's got another dividend payer, I know, uh, Several people are into JEPI, JEPQ. I've been watching them to see, you know, I'd like to buy them closer, to, a little closer to support, get a better risk reward, get a better price appreciation. But if you're just after their dividend yield, they, you know, pay an 11 and 12 percent. 
uh, monthly. They're, you know, pretty stable. Not a whole lot of price appreciation in the near term, but, you know, not bad long, longer term. Okay, John is asking about AGNC. Let me see what that is. I'm not familiar with what that is offhand. So I'm going to go to FinViz. Just a reminder, you can find um, links to these tools as well as all of our social media sites, etc. in the link section on our homepage. Homepage is beachbumtrading.com. So again, I keep links to all our tools there to make it quick and easy for me to uh, access those. So I'll throw that link up in the banner as well. So let's go to FinBiz. AGNC. Okay, so this is a mortgage-backed REIT. Um, pays 14.33%. I also want to do something. Uh, let me go to, well, since it's a read, it's probably going to pay monthly. Um, but I like Weeble to be able to see their payout date. So that's uh, another nice feature of Weeble. If we bring up their chart in Weeble, we could see uh, it's paying monthly. It's paying about 12 cents. Last X dividend was on um, March 30th. So I'd expect the next one to be close to uh, April 30th. So. Uh, you know, not not too bad of a monthly dividend. It looks like it's run way up. So uh, doesn't look like a whole lot of price appreciation up to maybe 12 and a lot of potential downside, you know, maybe down to the, the you know, seven level or so. So uh, risk reward doesn't look all that great. Again, if you want to collect the monthly dividend, there may be better um, monthly dividend payers that you can find in our spreadsheet but again um, that may be one let's i don't think i have that one in here i'm not no i do it's already in there so uh, you could see the risk reward profiles you know it's not quite two to one adjusted yields about 30 so that's not too bad yields about 14 so uh, it's, uh, they're reporting next tax dividend date of 427. So again, it's already in our spreadsheet. It'll get updated, et cetera. Again, you can see more details of the risk reward profile uh, in our uh, dividend payer spreadsheet. And again, our all access and VIP Patreons have access to this uh, all the time. So I hope that helps. See if anybody else has any others they want to look at. Otherwise, we'll continue. I uh, want to wrap up pretty pretty soon. So we talked about junk. We're still long land. Uh, all those uh, real estate's been beaten up pretty severely uh, recently. I'm not real fond of the mortgage-backed uh, security REITs in general so i've been kind of avoiding those i don't like commercial properties but the real estate or the industrial i i don't mind so bad here's opp see it offers you know nice price appreciation we'd like it down around eight or so pdi we've talked about you can see it's almost two to one like it, you know, down 60 to 65, ideally. Been looking at this S ball, keeping an eye on that. We've talked about that. It's a volatile uh, ETF or a dividend pair on ETF. UDR, we've talked about. Also, you saw METC, which is one of our stocks on our watch list, also pays a small dividend quarterly, 13 cent. Okay, let me see if I've got anything else. So I've got uh, puts ROIC. Okay, so let me spin ahead to our options uh, strategy. So 
as we talked a little bit yesterday, we've got a couple option strategies that we're also using to generate income, generate money while we wait for the markets to, you know, trend. Uh, one of which is selling and buying back puts. So we have a Google Sheet that also identifies opportunities, potential opportunities for selling and buying back puts. And I'll very quickly uh, go through the ones that we currently have buys out on. Again, our all access and VIP Patreons have access to this. And if I make any adjustments um, during the week, I post that in the watch list uh, channel in our Discord. Also, I've added a couple um, columns to this that you'll see, which is the price at which I would sell or I'm trying to sell a put and also the current distance. So the last uh, price on the option uh, and its distance from my sell price. So those new columns, it just helps me uh, quickly identify, you know, how close are these. I also get alerts that tells me to adjust the price if um, the, the ask, if I'm trying to sell and the ask is below my price, it'll tell me I want, might want to adjust. Or if the buy is above my buy price, it tells me I might want to adjust. Uh, but this allows me to quickly see how close they are um, and uh, what kind of movement, if it's something I need to pay attention to versus going out Weeble and looking at the charts. So uh, we talked about Albemarle and uh, the effect of the Chilean government. Uh, putting controls on their lithium mines. And we saw Albert Mill took a big uh, decline. It pretty much pulled down the basic materials market with it. Um, and based on that, I did have a, a, a sellout on a put on Albert Mill. And I pulled that based on that news because uh, we don't don't know what the long-term effect on Albert Mill is going to be. Um, and I just I just removed it from our puts uh, for for the time being until we hear what the uh, ultimate fallout of all that is. So I currently have cells out on Experian, Generac, Google, Moderna, Micron. And again, you can now see in this Google, or yeah, in this Google sheet, uh, what price I currently have the cells at. You see, you know, what the strike price is, et cetera. Um, what the highs, lows, last, et cetera. All this is updated by our automated systems. And then we have the actual stock prices are updated by Google Functions. So I'm looking for, you know, better than a dollar. So those are highlighted in green. So, and then also now I can see, you know, how far away is, is the last option price uh, from where my sell price is. So again, it hopefully helps, uh, me be more efficient and hopefully will also help you. You can see we've identified, you know, a recent high at which to try to sell. And then, you know, we as we adjust that down, if we need to, um, we'll adjust those prices. And we might see a rollover since we recent, recently went through options expiration. So, And again, if you'd like us to add or look at, do the research on any kind of puts and add, potentially add them to this spreadsheet, you can just let us know. Uh, I can do the research and add those to this spreadsheet. So, okay, so if anybody has any last minute questions, again, we've done a whole series of videos on the evolution of our options um, strategies that you can see. Uh, via this link to our option strategies for beginners with examples series of videos and again uh, the whole evolution of how we've uh, put this together how you can use this puts ROIC Google sheet etc more details about how it works um, so MD says can we add rocket I will put that on our notes and we will look at the And we will talk about that probably next week. I will take a look. Okay. So again, if you have any further questions, you can pour uh, recommendations for due diligence, uh, additions to our ETFs, dividend payers, puts, etc. Put them in the comments uh, to this video below. You can uh, contact us in our Discord. Just you know, add us, tag us in our Discord. 
again, our ID is 7313, because I'm no imposters, but tag us in our Discord. Discord's free to join. Um, you can find the link and invite in the description box below. Also, you can find the invite along with uh, links to all of our other social media sites on our homepage, beachbumtrading.com, bum without the U. So we, you can also ask us in, a face, in our Facebook group, in our Reddit community, via any of our social media sites, etc. So uh, many ways that you can contact us. We can further engage um, and we'll try to answer, you know, whatever uh, questions you may have as, as soon as we're able. So I hope this all helps, and I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you all again for joining us uh, in the live chat and for watching our video on part two of our uh, weekly trading game plan for the trading week of April 24th through April 28th. And we wish you all uh, the best of luck and have a great trading week. Bye.